that of our speaker arise on a matter of national importance concerning the security personnel extorting money from the people under the pretense of curfew violation. Right on the speaker, sometimes back, the government pronounced a curfew in this country. I would like to state it categorically clear that the curfew time is being violated and has become the source whereby the security personnel are using the curfew time to extort money from the citizens. Right on those speaker, the case in point in my district Amoro, the RDC directed that by 8.30 the business people at the trading centers must close their businesses. And as we talk now, big trading centers in Amoro, like Oluwal, like Keo, they close their businesses by 8.30. After 8.30, from 9 onwards, there is some security teams that were recruited recently, the police constables. You will find them moving from soap to soap, from village to village, and wherever they get people, they only ask for money strictly. Right over speaker, I also witnessed this within Kampala. Roadblocks are being mounted everywhere. After 9 p.m., anyone stop at the roadblock, that person must part with money. Right over speaker, right over speaker the okay. curfew time is doing more harm to Ugandans than good. My prayer, right over speaker, that government should stop the police officers from extorting money from the community. Second, right now, our speaker, government should really disband the so-called curfew. Right now, our speaker, aware that currently big markets are open, auctions are going on, barber shops. In fact, people are going on with their normal life. And why is it curfew time is still being implemented? Right now, our speaker, I pray, let government disband the curfew time. The curfew time is being used to extort money from the community. Information I get? No, no, no. We need to. Yes. He lives in the curfew. Yes, on our Kinovel. Right, Honorable. Thank you very much, my colleague, for giving it away. Right, Honorable, yesterday I was going to back at my home, between, between Kawempe and Kagoma. I found a line of people being tied, like uh, the, celeb the celebs they used to tie them those days. I stopped my car. The police, the police officer came to my door and said, what do you want? I said, no, what is happening? They had tied the boys, the ladies. I said, no, it's curfew time. I realized there was only one police officer qualified. The rest were busy. I call them election officials. Yeah, the election officials. I think the time for election is done. They should get back to their villages. I stopped there. The police officer came. I asked, can't you get these people moved to the station other than tying them, squatting, and waiting for what? So I told our speaker, the issue is they don't take the people arrested to the station. You call your relative, they come with the money, you are released. They, their bonds are always at night. So, as a speaker, this is an issue. The minister should come up very clear and they, they, they clarify whether we have the curfew and who are the, the police officers manning the curfew, other than using the election officials who are soliciting money and spoiling the name of the government. Yes, Honorable. Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. And I want to thank my colleague who has raised this matter. Last week on Wednesday, 
I in a special cabinet meeting, I presented a petition from the private sector regarding the curfew and the manner in which the curfew is being managed. This was after a presentation from the Minister of Health on uh, the progress of COVID-19. And Madam Speaker, Cabinet decided that the National Task Force on COVID-19 sits and reviews all those standard operational procedures to make sure that some of them are really withdrawn because we are progressing very well on the management of COVID-19. The matter is very important. The private sector is crying, and everybody really, including us members of parliament. By the time you leave parliament, you are worried about the curfew, yet we have a lot of work to do. This is the information I wanted to give, right on our. Oh, okay, if you could be handled urgently. You know, it's very difficult. You know, you go to your village, then you have to decide how to live in order to be in Kampala by before nine years. Yes. Madam Speaker, the situation is worsened when Kenya is closing the borders. We can't export the maize. Now the cap is also bad. It has trouble trading internally. I think this is really, I don't know how to term it. Madam Speaker, it is high time. We don't need even a meeting of what and what. Just withdraw the cap and allow the Ugandans to trade. It is time for us to recover. We are bad luck. Madam Speaker, we can't waste any time. This thing of saying that a meeting, a meeting, a meeting, another meeting, how many meetings do we need? The country needs to be open. We are doing badly. We are doing badly. I'm speaking on behalf of the people of Uganda who are doing badly. And personally, we are doing badly. I'm also doing badly. Open the country. No, no, no. Let, let's try that one. Yeah, thank you, Right Honourable Speaker. Right Honourable Speaker, this matter is very urgent. Ugandans are crying silently. Ugandans are crying silently. Money is being extorted from them. The people who are suffering the more are the border border people. The border border people are really suffering wherever they are arrested. They are asked to pay the minimum of 50,000 Uganda shillings. Yet in a day, someone could work, could work less than 10,000 shillings. Right now, Speaker, let the government take this matter very seriously. I beg to move. Honourable Minister, this is a matter which is really urgent. We don't think you need to meet for very long over this matter. It is a clear matter. What is the use of the curfew now? There isn't. There is no need to confine people anymore. So you have a date before the end of this week. This one touches the human rights of the people of Uganda. You also have to reach quickly. We want an answer next Tuesday about the curfew and the other special operating procedures. I think this is the same thing you want to talk about Ramadan. My issue was about having that extension, but given the fact that we have heard from so many members about this issue of curfew and the minister that they are reviewing it.